driving down this country road for our late afternoon appointment, and I saw this out of the corner of my eye. I suppose it's a, a 65, although I'm not sure. Let's see, it's a 5T. I think 5 probably means 65, but I'm not sure about that. 5T07C, so it's a C code. Uh, which means it's a 289, and I think that means it's a uh, two-barrel. This one's been souped up, and it has a four-barrel on there, but from the factory it had a two-barrel. It's got, you know, a hypo air cleaner. It's got air conditioning, which is interesting, but that looks like a later model air conditioning unit. Power brakes. It's an automatic. If you look, it's got the fog lights in the front, so that was part of a GT package, and a lot of times they had dual exhaust. So let's see if this car has dual exhaust. So we're just driving down the road. I knocked on the door and the woman answered and said that her husband and her son, yeah, it's got dual exhaust. Her husband and her son fixed it up and the son drove it nearby and somebody backed into it. And uh, so they towed it here. The son moved to Atlanta and now her 13 year old grandson would like to fix this car up, but they can't find the title. So uh, I guess there's a, continuing saga with this car but that's a good car kind of period correct bullet mirrors here very common sports car accessory in the day I know they were on Cobras as well as Jaguars so it's a black car with black interior really musty in there look at all the spider webs and stuff going on uh, automatic it looks like it's got factory air although that may be an add-on it's got hot rod gauges in it if it had if it had the original gauges, I could tell you if it's a 65 or 66. The 65 had uh, a uh, horizontal speedometer, and the 66 had a circular speedometer. But that, those gauges were removed, whatever they were, and uh, a panel has been installed with aftermarket gauges. You don't find old Mustangs much anymore just sitting in a yard like this. It seems to have a solid body, but you can see that moss is kind of taken over. It wouldn't be a big deal to replace the, the panels in the front here that need to be replaced. In fact, the, the right front fender is, is still solid. So you need a left front fender, a bumper, a valance, a grill, probably a hood. And this would have to be pulled out here. In fact, there's inner fender damage here. This inner fender panel is buckled. So this has to be pulled out and a new brace put across the, uh, the front here. But still, that's, that's not a lot of work and those parts are readily available. <coughs> so that's a good car. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can go talk to the woman and see if, you know, if she's interested in selling it. We hit the gold mine. Remember what I said about x-ray vision? Just, just look, look in the in the window here. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? You know, you ride down the road. Okay, well, we're we're hungry. We should stop for lunch. But let's go take a look at that old Mustang. And we, the lady said we could take videos of the Mustang. And I just happened to wander around, wishing I had X-ray vision. But now we have permission to be on this property. Look in the window. And there's a Shelby Mustang in here. I'm gonna ask her if I can, you know, we can include this car in the shoot. I, I gotta call her husband, but I don't need to do it now. He gets home, it's, well, I mean, maybe I should do it now. Because if he says, go ahead and do it, we we're here, right? So let me, let me call him right now. Okay. Yep. Hi, Rick, my name is Tom Cotter. I live in North Carolina, but I drive around the country in an old woody wagon looking for old cars for Haggerty Insurance, just to uh, videotape old cars. And we rode down the road here and saw the Mustang in your driveway. And your wife said we could take some video pictures of it. So we did that. And while, while um, the cameraman was shooting that, I just wandered around and peeked in the back door of your garage and saw that there's uh, another interesting car in there. So I looked in the window, wanted to see if we could videotape that car as well not identifying who owns it or where it is. 
So uh, I look forward to talking to you. Tom Cotter. I'm a Ford guy too, so I appreciate what you got here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Might as well hit the road. Two days ago, we were driving down this road in central Florida, and you know, I always turn my head like back this way and this way to see what cars I just drove behind. In like a flash of a moment, I said, there was a Mustang, the car was crashed, I saw fog lights, that means a GT package. So we made a U-turn up there and came back. So while the, the camera people were taking pictures of this car, videotaping it, you know, there happens to be a garage over there, and I like snooping around garages. So I peeked in the back window and could not believe what I saw. The woman in the house gave me her husband's phone number and she said, make sure you tell him I didn't say you could look in there. And I said, okay. I, and I, uh, so I said, you know, I, I was poking around. Well, he could have been really pissed off and said, don't come back. But he said, yeah, come on over. I'll, I'll show you the car. So Rick Luckhart. I thought about that. <laughs> Rick Luckhart, thank you for <laughs> inviting us here. You're welcome. So, so we looked at this car. So give us the thumbnail quickly on this, on this Mustang. It was your son's car. Yeah, this is my son's car. He... Um this was a, a reward for, for good behavior. And he, he, was, he was making some intelligent choices for a while. And so we made him a deal and he kept up his end of it. And we had this made for him. I said, look, you get to pick the year. Whoa. You get to just, and then we'll go find out what it cost. You know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh -huh. So he says, I want a 65 coupe and I want a 289 and I just, an automatic and so we and with air he was happy with it for he drove it all through high school when he graduated college we got him a, a, new, a new to him car more dependable than this and this was parked at his mom's house and somebody ran into it one night and that's what happened that's what happened hmm. so i haven't told the viewers yet what we're about to see but can you walk us back sure. now legally legally you don't have any guns on you do you no i do not <laughs> Okay. Shelby GT500 convertible. Man, oh man. Last on the road in 81? No. No? No, it's a couple of years ago. So is there a story to this car? Uh, you've, the way I ended up with it is I picked it up in 1972 during the first Arab oil embargo. No kidding. Yeah, I had a four, I was originally driving a 442 uh, in 68 with a four speed. And I injured myself and ended up losing my right foot. And my parents said, we don't feel, feel good with you driving a manual transmission. I said, it's my right foot though. <laughs> and they said, we don't feel comfortable about that with insurance and stuff. So I said, okay. And a friend of mine um, was a salesman, car salesman I met at the car club at the Ford dealership. And one of the salesmen who was in the club part of the club that worked there, went and got a job up at the Chevy dealership. I talked to him and I said, what do you got up there? And he goes, well, we're getting a lot of stuff in. He says, I got an LT1 Corvette. It's automatic. Why don't you come up and look at it? And I said, okay. So I drove up there and this thing was pretty rough, but he, I'm walking around the lot and we saw the, the, the Shelby here. I, I said, well, what's this? He goes, I don't know. He goes, I guess it just came in today. And I traded in my 442, my 68 442, and $1,500. And I had this, and I've had this ever since. And is this a 69 or a 70? This? Yeah. This is a 70, because of the black hood stripes. Oh, that's a difference. That's the only difference between a 69 and a 70. So you bought a two-year-old car. Right. <laughs> How many miles were on it? Um, geez, I don't, I don't remember. It was only about 30,000, maybe at most. <laughs> Wow. So anyway, I've had it, and um, was it your daily driver? Oh yeah, it for, was forever? for a long time. Yeah, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. I wanted to get it just painted and stuff, and it's been. It's. I had one guy up here who went out of business, pulled the motor out, and he was going to have it rebuilt, and I had to track the motor down to oh, the man. to the to the machine shop who had it, who never got paid to start the work on it, even though I paid the mechanic. I'll make a long story short, I did find a guy I trusted. <laughs> and went through it all. And I drove it in home. I drove it around for a couple days. I got pictures of me with my grandson. Drove it around and pulled it in. Shortly thereafter, my wife got ill and my daughter um, needed some financial help. And so the, it couldn't justify 
keep right. taking it out and putting wear and tear on it. And it's pro I'm probably I probably ought to just put it up on jack stands and start it and put it in gear every once in a while. Yeah. So it's the, it's the original motor that was rebuilt. Original motor. So it's a 428 Cobra Jet. Correct. Uh -huh. Okay. C6 huh. transmission. Um, I think it's a 308 gear in the back. Well, let, uh, let me tell quick. you what the, the research I did. Now Haggerty's got a uh, an online uh, auto estimator, mm -hmm. and they it's based on. Uh, the values of cars that sell in sure. auctions around the, around the country and around the world. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what this, this is worth. This car in fair condition, okay. now that means a running car. Right. But this probably would be a running car without much work. Oh yeah, you just charge the battery. So the Haggerty Price Guide says that this car is uh, worth about $74,500 mm -hmm. in fair condition. Fair. 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 In good condition, and maybe it could be washed up to be in good condition. Oh yeah, it needs yeah. Ninety-three thousand six hundred dollars. Well, I got a cover around here somewhere. I should probably. <laughs> All right, so that. hang on, wait. Okay. All right. No, it's uh, in excellent condition, which is probably less the, than I, this. Yeah, probably. No, this is less than excellent. this. Right. Yeah. One hundred seventeen thousand. I mean, okay. And Concours, which is not, and it would take a lot of money to get it there, one hundred fifty-five thousand right. dollars. So, and then then there are additions and deletions, such as. Add 20% for a drag pack. Does that have a drag pack? No. Okay. Uh, add 10% for AC. There you go. 10%. Well, it's got air conditioning. Mm. Minus 20% for automatic. So you just lost. That's okay. <laughs> your AC. I'm never selling. It doesn't make a difference. So all that being said, no mm. matter what condition, the car sold for uh, $5,027 new uh, without the AC. 5027 How many of these were made? About two total, total total Shelby's in sixty nine seventy were thirty two hundred ninety four. However, of the the GT five hundred convertible, I did my homework. I know they're about two three hundred thirty five three thirty five, which is the same as the horsepower. The three hundred thirty five horsepower and three thirty five made. Sixty nine Chev and seventy Shelby's have hood locks. It's like those little round keys, and Rick, the owner, uh, has an idea where they are, but he's not quite sure where they are. So we couldn't open the hood to show you, but it is. A 428 Cobra Jet. It's all original, except the the air pollution pump has been taken off, and a uh, an aluminum intake manifold has been put on instead of the cast iron manifold. But it is a 428 Cobra Jet with 335 horsepower. It's going to be uh, uh, rejuvenated mechanically and washed up and and put back on the road again soon by the guy who's owned it and driven it since it was a three-year-old car. So the car in the driveway might not be the one that's the real treasure that you're driving by. There might be something behind that car. Happy hunting.